Hi. Hey guys. So uh, yeah, welcome to our kind of autopilot technical orientation webinar. Uh, I'm Dan Freeman. We've got uh, Aaron Moraski over there uh, standing in front of the, the autopilot mounted, and uh, Michael Baker and Kip have joined us as well. But you know, mostly this is just about us talking about how to hook up the autopilot system, how to uh, do some basic operation on it. And then just answer your questions of how you want to have things work for you. So uh, take it away, Aaron. Yeah, well, basically, when you get your autopilot, you're gonna you're gonna get the the compute card that's gonna be already installed in the dock. It's already gonna be set up and configured. Uh, the software is gonna be installed and ready to go. Um, as soon as you power on the dock, the autopilot system will launch automatically. You don't even have to do anything. So, um, and we we ship the unit with with tracking enabled. The settings are all set up, so it should be just really just plug and play. You just turn it on and uh, stand in front of the camera, and just just like I'm doing here, it's it just starts starts tracking you right away. So, what I'll talk about now is a little bit about kind of the setup and and how that looks. It's uh, it's not a lot of cables or anything. Basically, what we do is we send our VDO 360 mount, and it's a metal uh, gang mount here, and so this will mount up to a gang box, and then underneath it, we have the visa mount for the uh, dock. That will come already attached. So you would basically just install this onto the wall, and then you have your Sabre camera is uh, gonna have a, basically a loop with the with the cables already bundled up and ready to go if you want to do the wall mount. And you'll just plug in the power, of course, to the dock and to the Sabre and uh, run that on my little display here. I want to all add a power outlet later. But uh, then it's just a couple of cables. You want the, the blue one is going to be the USB video signal, and that's going to be the video from output from the Nook, or, I'm sorry, from the, uh, from the Sabre. And the other one, the black one, is a control cable. And so what happens is, is the, the Saber sends a video signal to, to the uh, card, and that's processed by the Perfect Track software, and that's, uh, it, it analyzes the image and sees which direction the target moves, and then it sends the uh, commands to move the camera over the control cable. So you just plug in those two, and then uh, you'll put in the little uh, Visa mounting screws on the bottom, and then you'll just uh, slap it in there. Just mount it up just like that. So it's pretty easy. Um, gives you a nice clean install and, and looks great and works very well. Dan, yeah, anything to add to that? Are you muted? Uh, thanks, Aaron. Um... Basically, so when you open up the box, you're going to have a box with a Sabre camera in it. You're going to have uh, another box where it has the compute card dock with the card already installed into it. And you're going to have the anchor mount with the cable harness attached to it already. So you mount that, that mount to a single gang box is what we recommend. The easiest way to do it. Then uh, using the, uh, the thumb screw on the bottom of the anchor mount, you attach the camera, and when you have the camera just before you have it completely hardened up, you go ahead and swivel the camera off the side and, and connect up. You'll have a, um, a DVI to HDMI cable for the output of the neighbor camera, so you can have some type of output. And then you'll have the USB cable and the VSCA cable. So you hook all those up those three on the camera, and you have the two cables that come down, they're both USB, and those hook up to the compute card dock, and then the two power sources, one for the camera, one for the dock. Power the unit up, and it'll automatically start tracking for you. Is that correct? That sounds good to me. And All right. One other thing I'll add is uh, once you've got uh, the the card set up and it's on the network, you can you can access the control panel for Perfect Track uh, from from any computer that's uh, on the same network. So, for example, here um, on my phone, I've got uh, just the web page going to the IP address for for the web server for the software. So I can just turn on tracking, 
from a tablet, from another computer, uh, it doesn't matter. So it can, it's just easy to, uh, to stop, it, stop it and start it. So if you need to stop tracking, like maybe you want to leave the camera pointed at a presentation or a whiteboard of some kind, um, it's really easy to, to get tracking turned on and off. Cool. And, that, and that's one of the really neat features of it. I don't think that a lot of people understand is that uh, you can you can use the uh, the your phone to turn this thing on and off as you're up on the stage. Anybody else have any questions? Okay, I'm not seeing anybody. I've got, somebody says I, they can't hear us, but uh, hmm. anybody else having that problem? Dan, maybe a minute. Uh, this is Chip. Maybe just a minute uh, on talking about uh, the steps you go through to activate and the steps you go through to turn on and off the tracking. I know it's only a few steps, but... Um, Maybe we could just talk about that for a sec. Yeah, I've got a couple of people want to join us too for uh, uh, interactions here. I uh, think they should get a notification that they're live. But at any rate, go ahead, uh, Aaron, if you want to run through, uh, run through what the, the software, how to turn it on and off. You can use your, use your phone if you'd like. Yeah, sure. So basically, um, You'll have an interface that you can use the interface that's directly off of the card, or you can just access it um, via an IP address uh, to go to that same interface. And basically, the only the only commands you really have are start and stop tracking. Um, there's some preferences that you can set for the camera and how you want the the face centered in the frame. But once you have that all set up, it's it's done. Um, it's it takes literally 15 seconds, and and you're up and running. Yeah, I think we timed it from the time the uh, the unit boots up, or actually from the time it's plugged in to the time you're tracking is 58 seconds. So that, that includes the entire time for the whole system to boot up and get going. Okay. So... Again, I'm not seeing anybody asking any questions. So, looks like two people have uh, have joined in there. Michael Love oh, and Gina. Yeah. Hey. <laughs> hey, welcome, you guys. Hey, right, thank you. Yeah, uh, ask ask any questions. What what you got going on? I have the uh, regular video 360 which uh, doesn't track so i want to replace it with okay. this camera with this camera but uh <clears throat> i mean uh, do when i take the other one out will i just plug in the same wires to this one or what now which uh which camera do you have now michael i got <clears throat> the 360 um vd 360. Uh, okay yeah that's a usb2 camera so um the output of this unit is going to be HDMI out. And then if you want to use a USB output, you get the USB version, which has a converter on the end that changes that HDMI to USB 3.0. So I run another cable from the computer to the monitor? Yeah, it, it, may, be, uh, it may be a little bit of uh, cable running. I, I'm happy to... Uh, Happy to help you work through that, though. That's not an issue, really. Mm. <clears throat> okay, well, um, now, can I see it on the computer and also on the screen at the same time? Yes, you know, the way it depends on what you're going to be uh, using the, the uh, feed for, but you can use the uh, HDMI feed. You can bring that into, uh, there's HDMI splitters, uh, and then take one feed off of that and use that as the USB feed for your streaming service. And the other one for viewing up onto a screen. Depends on what you're gonna be using with the output for. 
uh, what type of, are you recording? Or are you streaming directly to the web? Are you using this uh, in a conference type of situation? Well, this, is a, this, is a, this is a church and we were caught in sermons as a okay. uh, yeah. minister okay. preacher. And uh, perfect application. Yeah. Now, you don't have anybody here in the Houston, Texas area who can uh, just come out and install it and we pay them, right? Oh, absolutely. We have uh, we have dealers all over the country. Um, go ahead and drop an email to sales at bdo360.com. And I'm uh -huh. sure that uh, one of our team there will get back to you right away and get you set up with somebody to help you out. Okay, I'll do that today. Perfect. Perfect. There is a uh, chat question. Uh, will this work with standard Polycom codec systems, Dan? Yeah, actually, uh, if they have an HDMI input on the uh, on the device, it'll work with any of the Polycom devices. Work with Cisco as well. Actually, any any type of product with an HDMI input, it's uh, quite easy to hook this up to. Now, if you have a product that you're going to be using an input as a USB three, what you have to do is you have to get the USB version of this, which includes the the uh, the adapter that you need. Uh, Randy at OSU asked uh, uh, any support of past diecap products or upgrades with current tools. Uh, upgrades, I don't think we really really don't have too much of a path for right, that right now. Um, there was some, with some of the stuff that Windows has done lately, it's uh, it's been a little difficult to uh, uh, keep the licensing the way that, that they had it before with the die cap stuff. So we've changed that licensing structure. In doing so, <laughs> we've had to interrupt the, uh, we've had to interrupt the, the way that that flow works. Uh, feel free to reach out to us, though, and we can discuss how to make sure that you're stay, staying up to date. And again, I think the the right way to do that would be to just drop an email to sales at video 360com I think we're going to see Randy at, uh, at Infocom, too, so we'll have a Super. conversation with him there. Super. Next, uh, we have uh, Andrew Abrams, Abrahamson on with us. Andrew, you there? Yep, nope, I don't hear anything from Andrew right now. So uh, anyway, who else do we have? Anybody else have any more questions? Because totally into helping out with that. That's it on my side. I can't see any more chat or questions here, Dan. Okay, okay. Um, I'm just testing to see if you. Okay, testing to see if you guys can hear me there. Yeah, sure can. Yeah. Okay, great. It gave me about five confirmations before my mic was on. Um, I, I two questions. One is the uh, USB 3 video capture device. That's um, just the converter, the HDMI to USB converter? Correct. Looking on the, pro on the product page? Yeah, yeah. Okay. And is there any way to have simultaneous USB and HDMI if we're feeding, say, a conferencing PC and a capture device simultaneously? What I would suggest at that point is using an HDMI splitter. Okay. So to bring it into a splitter, take one feed off, drop it in as your uh, with your capture device, and use the other feed, of course, for your whatever you're going to do with your HDMI. Okay. Um, excellent. Thank you. And it looks like the in terms of the pricing, the the camera itself, the Saber is about fifteen hundred dollars. And the package is about five, so that means that the tracking tracking piece is about thirty five hundred. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, that includes the uh, Intel compute card and dock software, the mount, the cabling. Um, okay. Basically, everything you need. Excellent. Thank you. You bet. And uh, do you have uh, preferred resellers in the Boston area, or do you prefer that uh, people buy direct? Oh no, we don't do uh, any sales direct. We do support the the resellers adamantly. I think they're such, they're such a great value. 
Just send your request to sales at bdo360.com and, and I'll get you in touch with the reseller up there. Okay, great. Thank you. Okay. Oh, um, and I, my last question was the um, the uh, mini PC is also, that's also running the server that handles the remote management? Yes. Um, that, yeah, that, this is, uh, I don't know if, if you can see this, this is this is basically the computer right here. Okay. We're using the Intel compute card. The reason they have to have a dock that's so large is uh, you end up having to have space to put the the in, ins and outs on it. <laughs> right. Um, you know what are you going to do? Mm -hmm. But this this card is just it's fascinating and it's a really really powerful machine. So. We're we're very happy with the way that works. However, uh, the we want to make sure that you understand that this is think of it as an appliance, not as a PC. Sure. So sure. So we don't want anything else running on on this at all. Got other it. Other than the, the perfect track software. That that makes sense. That makes um, sense. and do you have um, is there a, a network connection on that as well? Yeah, I'm just yeah, wondering. Yeah. Okay, so it's the network connection in the server that runs on there, which is what you're use, doing any of your remote management from. Yes. Yeah, and so you can you can get to it, uh, you can get to it from from like Aaron was showing you from his phone. I mean, which yeah. I think is really a cool feature. Yeah. Um, and and over Wi-Fi also, if you want. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, because that. The compute card actually has the the Wi-Fi built into it as well. Ah, so, so it's running its own Wi Wi-Fi network. Well, it get it joins up to your net Wi-Fi network. Gotcha. Yeah. Joins up to your Wi-Fi network. Say, uh, Michael or Chip, I see some uh, Q and A questions coming in. Can you guys uh, address those? I'm not seeing the questions themselves on my end. Yeah, I got uh, one here that says. Um... Uh, what's your website? It's uh, www.video360.com. Uh, is there a phone number I can call? I'm missing this and have a demo tomorrow at 7 a.m. Uh, yeah, just my phone number is 719-433-5055. Want to repeat that again? Yep, 719 Five zero five five, and then Randy asked, "Does it work with current or older Vadio cameras?" Yeah, um, you know, I would have to, I'd have to test it to make sure that everything's good. I know that there was, there was some Vadio cameras that were tested and validated with the software. Uh, in individual cameras, I'd have to, we'd have to test them for you. We don't. At this time, we don't see any uh, um, see a path for those cameras being controlled by the software at this time. That doesn't mean that that's not going to happen, but we're just not seeing that as a um, a path that we're going down right now. Uh, Ross Bertram said, uh, "I joined five minutes late. Can you give an overview of the technology?" Sure. Yeah, okay, that'd be a good thing to you know kind of close up. So basically, what we have is we have the uh, Saber camera, which is a 12x USB uh, simultaneous USB and and uh, DVI output camera. We take the USB output of that, and we go into a uh, Intel compute card dock with the compute card already inserted into it. Uh, we go into that, and coming out of that is a uh, RS-232 control cable, goes back up to the camera. The DICAP software, which runs on Windows 10 Pro, is uh, running in the background on the compute card dock, analyzing the image and driving the camera around via RS-232, this guy. And that's basically what's happening in the background there. Now, the software isn't just driving the camera, it's also looking at the speed that the person is moving. Uh, it's doing a little bit of anticipation to make, try to smooth things out. 
And it's a very unique system in that it's the only one that can do zoom. So it zooms in and out to keep the framing as, as close as it can. Now, I know that the, the tracking looks a little funky where Aaron's at right now, but that, that happens to be because it's such a short throw that uh, the camera's, camera's working pretty hard to uh, try to try to justify you know, movement across a, a four or five foot area. So it's really kind of built for the uh, presentation space and uh, you know, on up to a very large presentation space where the camera has a little bit of a uh, way of anticipating motion. Uh, as you noticed, Aaron moves around, does a pretty good job. Yeah, lost me in the light here. Yeah. Yeah, but just track oh. right back on. Don't 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 step back. Don't step into the light, Aaron. Don't step yeah. into the light. Um, hey Dan, this is Chip. One one quick Chip? point. Uh, you yeah. you did mention uh, some of the guys we know over at DiCap, and of course uh, uh, they were the ones that first put together the software. But Video 360 has acquired the software and also done some modifications and changes to it. Uh, so. So some people did buy the system when it was known uh, from DICAP. Uh, DICAP is no longer a functioning entity, uh, and Video360 does own um, the, uh, the, soft, the Perfect Track software now. And the only yeah. thing I wanted to mention is that, I don't know if there are other questions, but I want to make sure that before we left, that we just quickly addressed uh, our Infocom situation, that uh, where we'll be, and and also the very oh, special yeah. surprise that we're going to have on each day of Infocom. Yeah, thanks. Uh, we're going to be at, at uh, in 1763, and every day, you know, yeah, Chip and I and Michael and you know Aaron, we've all gone to these trade shows, and you see all the the giveaway stuff, and we got tired of buying pins and coasters. And, thumb drives. So we decided we're going to do something a little different this year. We're going to give away a full autopilot system every day. So it's about 4,800 bucks that we're giving away every day of the show. And I think that beats a free pin any day of the week. Of course, yeah, I don't know, man, those, those, those York thin mints are pretty good though. I, I do enjoy those. <laughs> <laughs> hey Dan, one quick question I think deserves to have an answer, and that is from Randy. Yeah. Has the card been vetted with IT security? Yes, actually, um, that was that's one thing that uh, Intel has, has done ahead of time. Is these are these are full Intel machines. These are not uh, these are not a, a secondary manufacturer piece of equipment coming direct from Intel, and Excellent. and their security department's gone fully vetted. Uh, I do see there's some more Q and A's there, and I cannot get to them for some reason. Uh, Michael, I you've got, got access to them. Uh, yeah, yeah. I got them. Um, Randy's on a roll here. <laughs> Has the compute okay. card run through security steps? Often, new devices need authentication and vetted on EDU networks. Um, I believe they have, you know, and and that's something that we can we we are going to have. Uh, uh, Folks from Intel joining us at the booth in uh, that Infocom. Again, that's in 1763 North Hall, 1763. And I'm going to ask those questions of Paul when he's there. Paul will be able to answer yep. that for sure. Yep. Uh, I I have zero zero doubt that that has not been done. I mean, I know Intel and their security stuff. They're they're pretty adamant about it. So uh, the price is uh, forty nine forty three some forty nine forty five. Somebody asked that uh, for the unit that you're looking at. And then the next question was: so the primary application would be a single presenter application, such as lecturers. Lecturers yes. are going to be yes, the primary source. You're going to be in uh, lecture rooms, classrooms, training rooms, and events. Um, I definitely would not recommend putting it into a conference room, a small conference, large or medium sized conference room. Um, it's just not enough space and distance uh, for the camera and the solution to, to function properly. So yes, you're, the answer is absolutely yes. It's for uh, lecture applications, but not necessarily single presenter. Um, 
when I say that, I mean that a presenter can be giving their presentation and then the handoff is very simple. The next presenter just walks in front of the current presenter and that X presenter walks off and the new presenter is tracking. So it's not gonna be where you're talking and the camera moves to you. It's gonna be to someone on a stage or in a lecture hall, classroom or an event. Uh, that's the best way to define the tracking. So that means there's- Michael, no if I could just add to that. So, you know, I, I like to say like, you know, the, the perfect track software is basically analyzing this video frame that every single frame that comes into it. So it's, it's looking for the largest face to track. And so if you put another face in that frame, it has to start making decisions on what it's gonna do. And so if, if you take away that, that it having to make those decisions, then you get a lot better performance. Um, when you start introducing multiple people, you have to be very conscientious of, of where they're placed and where that and how that software is working because it's using facial recognition. So you put multiple faces in the frame and, and uh, it, can, it, can, it can be problematic. So definitely, definitely think, a single presenter is ideal. I think Andrew had something you wanted to say, Andrew? Uh, yes, yeah, so there's no audio component to the tracking. It's strictly by the video. Correct. Right. Good. And what it does is it does uh, facial and then shape, largest face shape, shoulders type of thing. So, Aaron, if you want to turn around so they can see that it's not just the face, it's going to track track Aaron yeah. based on his shape as well. And, and then it does uh, does emotion anticipation as well. And could you give a, a minimum recommended room size? You know, I wouldn't do anything less than 15 foot and throw. Okay, um, great, thank you. Yeah, that, that, that to me makes, makes the most sense. If, if you go anything closer than that, and it's just, it, it's a little bit problematic. Aaron's probably 10 foot right now, wouldn't you say? Oh, no, I'm, I'm like, I'm really tight on this. It's, it's only about, six feet so it's uh oh, yeah it's it's wow. it's right up on me so yeah generally you know rooms that are less than 15 feet you, you know you, you almost don't need motion tracking because you know a good camera is going to have a big enough field of view and it's going to be close enough that um you're not really needing to track somebody so uh definitely those larger spaces where people are moving around like you know conference like uh, like a college classroom where you have a big long whiteboard kind of thing uh, those are good situations for it Hey, hey, Aaron. While you're in that in that mode, can you uh, uh, address the adjusting of the parameters uh, so that you're not necessarily a wide long shot, but you can be tighter on the individual? Yeah. So what you would do is uh, there, it, there's preferences where you can set the home position where if uh, if it loses the target for some reason or you want to just force it to go home, it'll it'll go back to that position. Um, and then if you want, you can, you can disable tilt, you can disable zoom. And so if you have a, a camera, that's like maybe in the back of a, an auditorium or something, and you need to, you need to force that to stay zoomed in, you zoom it to the level you want and you say, and disable the zoom at that point and you're good to go. And also now, Aaron, uh, you can, you can be to the right side or the left side of the frame. If you've got a presentation, a video or something else that's, that's being shown, uh, you can offset yourself from center, correct? Right. Well, yeah, for that, you, what you'd want to do is um, set your home position to be on that presentation. And right. then um, you'd, you'd stop the tracking on your device or tablet or whatever you're using. And then just and when you do that, it'll automatically go back to its home position. Does that make sense? And that pretty well that pretty well answers Adam Brillia's uh, 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 question. Is there a way to disable tracking in a setting with multiple presenters or during an audience Q&A? So that. Yeah. Here, I'll show you what that looks like on the phone again here. And we were talking about now applications I, I a few minutes ago. You know, the uh, we're, as, as we've started to sell this product, people are coming to us with applications. Of course, I think we have Michael Love still on with us now who uh, uh, is, is, is in a worship application. Uh, we've had some people that work in the legal fields talk to us about using it for depositions. Many depositions now need video recording. And there is motion in the room. And if you're going to have a, a deposition with someone that's going to do the video recording, you could pay about $1,000 a day for someone to take that camera and pan it around the room and follow that person or, or follow the exhibits that are presented during that time. So we had a couple inquiries about that. So the applications are going to keep developing as people start thinking about, oh, how can I use this technology to do what I want? 
Now, I right. see that Randy's asked about a maximum distance in the room. Um, you know, to be honest with you, that depends on on uh, a couple of things. How tight do you want to have the, the throw? The farthest that I've been able to track myself is close to 100 feet. And that was in a uh, in a trade show environment. So I was kind of like going in and out of lighting. It was pretty, pretty poorly lit, but it, it was a substantial different uh, distance away, at least 30 meters. Um, but it, it does depend on the, uh, the space that you're trying to work in. Um, I would say, you know, effective distance would be, I don't know, um, 50 foot, you know, it is, Probably a good good throw distance from it. And if now, you're if you're looking at those, between those longer distances, you're definitely going to want to set your zoom position to be in a little higher. Because if you don't, like if I go back and I'm I'm standing 50 feet away from the camera, um, my face is going to be pretty small and it's going to have trouble acquiring that target. So you, the face needs to be big enough where it can recognize, oh, there's a face. Yeah, the, and the, the Saber camera is a 12x zoom camera, so it, it's a good camera. What about the audience? Uh, it, it captures the minister, and uh, what about uh, the audience? Uh, how does that react if someone is moving in the audience? Well, if they're if the camera's at the back of the the worship facility or the back of the auditorium, it's going to see the back of people's heads. It's not going to see people's faces, and okay. that's then that's fine. You know, it's just it's not going to jump off of them at all. It'll okay. still be on the, on the lecturer, the presenter, that type of thing. Okay, all right. I recommend and in those situations you would want to you would want to set your zoom level to where you're you're basically zoomed in past the audience and 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 tighter in on the presenter. Right. Michael, yeah, uh, I, I, sorry. Yeah, go ahead. Marcus uh, asked the question: Would it be possible to get a demo system on site? Uh, you can send me an email at sales at video360.com and I will forward it to one of our channels to make sure you can get a demo. Um, uh, if you if uh, you want, mine is very simple. It's michael at video360.com, M-I-C-H-A-E-L. And I gave you my cell phone number earlier. It's 719-433-5055. Please give me a call and I'll be happy to arrange for a demo for you. Hey, how about, uh, I see there's still a bunch of questions up there. You got any more there, Michael? No, that's, that's it for right now. I, I think we've answered them all. All right. <laughs> and let's see, trying to go through anything else here. What about my old V60, V360 camera? What about that one? Uh, do I get a discount for replacing it? <laughs> <laughs> okay, you got to talk to Chip about that. I'm out of this one. Yeah, there you go. There you go. I'm getting out of no, this. No negotiations in a webcast. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll talk offline, Michael. <laughs> 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 now uh, I I see that there was a, a note about the uh, that it times out when someone turns their backs, much like the die cap did or does. I have not seen it time out in normal use. Now I haven't tested how long mm -hmm. it takes mm -hmm. before it turns off turns off, but I haven't seen it time out yet. You know, just just saying. We'll try it. Yeah, yeah, we'll give it a go. See what happens. You hey guys, don't forget uh, N1763 at Infocom. Make sure you stop by to register to win uh, one of the three autopilot tracking camera solutions we're offering as giveaways. Uh, extremely important opportunity. And uh, I don't know if many people have done this. I've been around this business for a while. Um, but uh, make sure you stop by and chat with us. Uh, stop in and visit. We'd love to see you. You got and by the way, if I can add, Michael, is the um, that's the uh, more expensive USB version of the product, which can uh, be utilized for either USB three output 
or for DVI slash HDMI output. Yep. Let's see. And then uh, Randy asked once more for our e uh, email address. Uh, email is uh, sales at bdo360.com or michael at bdo360.com. Obviously, we're very challenged when it comes to making up email addresses. So, <laughs> so you can reach Chip at video360.com, Aaron at video360.com, or Dan at video360.com. We're, uh, we're, we're very creative that way. Um, <laughs> and then I do have another there. question. Dan, yeah. I have one more question. In a multiple camera situation like a church application, could you manually control the camera during a service and then switch it to auto track when the pastor speaks? Yeah, you'd need to have an operator, of course, to to do that type of switching and the and the uh, you know the analysis of when that when the pastor's speaking. The pastor could have the uh, the camera tracking application already up on his phone, and when he's ready to start tracking, he just hits the button and starts starts tracking him. That's one way of doing it at a uh, uh, very low personnel cost. Um, this. One thing that the system can do that we don't really push a lot right now, but you can integrate this in with the Crestron. And what the Crestron system does is it's it's interfacing with the same uh, the same web server basically that that you're seeing on your phone or your tablet or a separate PC. It's just doing it on its own, and then you can start and set the tracking and and do some of the controls you with the Crestron. Since the uh, camera is a uh, Visca controlled camera, uh, the, the Crestron can control the camera and then switch the tracking on and off as well. A little bit more of a uh, advanced play, but it does work. Are you guys gonna be in the Houston, Texas area anytime soon? Well, uh, you know, uh... Go ahead. I, I can be if if it's a if it's a, a good opportunity. Of the we do have dealers down there that uh, I'll be happy to talk to you offline about and and get you a, a contact for. Okay. Okay. Uh, Randy came in here again, so it's best to use RS two thirty two control or network back to control system or web server. So. The control system actually is going to address, if you're using a Crestron type control system, the uh, plugin actually addresses the local host 8000. So it's actually doing the web server in interrogation. The, uh, the control of the camera is through RS-232. That's, that's the, the BISCA control goes over RS-232 from the Intel compute card to the camera. Hope that answers that question for you. And I'm just plugging through here. There's a few other questions. I want to make sure we get them all. Uh, no, I have not tried a Kramer control. I asked Randy about Kramer. I haven't tried Kramer control with it. Um, the, the Kramer should be able to operate it just fine. And we're happy to uh, work with that team over there if they'd like to create a plugin for it. And I'm trying to read through the rest of these questions really quick here. Okay, I think I think we've just about nailed it, guys. Yep. And da da da. Well, we'd like to thank everybody that uh, joined in today. Yeah. Uh, in addition to uh, being able to to ping any of us on email with questions, uh, comments, or um, applications, we'd be happy to communicate with you. You had a couple of phone numbers already go out now, uh, and I think that um, we're we're asking for your feedback. We're asking for your input. We've seen how how good this product works, but we're we're now finally getting it out into the field, so we learn a lot from you guys. So please uh, don't hesitate to let us know what you're doing. 
and what you want to do, and we'll do our best to make sure we can accommodate it. Again, thanks, um, and certainly uh, please come and visit us at Infocom. Uh, three of those systems are going to be given away. We really look forward to seeing you. Yeah, and uh, I just I just want to say uh, I appreciate the time that everybody spent here with us today. It uh, means a lot to me, and I, I really really have a lot of passion for for what we do. And uh, if I can share that at all with anybody, just let us know. We're uh, we're happy to help. We really like doing this. Okay. All right. Remember, come to Vegas and see us in 1763. You'll see Aaron, Michael, myself. We'll have uh, Paul Guillory from Intel is going to be joining us for uh, a few hours each day. Chip gets to to stay with his nose to the grindstone. He doesn't get to come play in Vegas. Um, remember, the uh, Las Vegas Knights are going to be uh, be uh, doing the hockey thing. So. Uh, be prepared for that. Go Cavs. And, Go Cavs. and <laughs> yeah, this is why you don't get to go to Vegas. <laughs> <laughs> At any rate, we really want to thank you guys for uh, for joining with us and look forward to seeing everybody in Las Vegas. Thank right. y'all. Cheers. Thank you. And uh, I'll be sending out a link to the, uh, the recording of this if you have any questions, things things you think you might have missed, it'll be on that. All right? Here's y'all. Right. Bye. Peace out. Bye.